Researchers and scientists have found ultra-strong diamonds in dwarf planets and meteorites. The diamonds, also known as hexagonal diamonds and Lonsdalite diamonds, have taken the internet by storm. Where did these diamonds occur? How can we create laboratory-made Lonsdalite diamonds? Stay tuned to find out all the important unanswered questions we need answered, especially how scientists find weird ultra-strong diamonds from an obliterated dwarf planet. Let's go! First up, what is a Lonsdalite diamond? In a recent study, researchers claim to have discovered the largest crystals of the enigmatic substance known as Lonsdalite a type of diamond. This information was released in a paper that was published on Monday in the peer-reviewed journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences PNAS. The researchers estimate that Lonsdalite is about 58% harder than Earth's diamonds because of its unusual hexagonal shape. Regarding its crystal structure, Lonsdalite, also known as hexagonal diamond, is an allotrope of carbon, having a hexagonal lattice as opposed to the cubical lattice of a typical diamond. It occurs naturally in the form of meteorite debris, when meteorites that contain graphite collide with the Earth. The resulting intense heat and stress turn the graphite into a diamond while preserving its hexagonal crystal structure. Next up, how was the diamond created? Let's learn how the diamond was created. The research done by McCulloch and colleagues revealed that these Lonsdalite occurrences might have developed after a dwarf planet was obliterated by a massive asteroid some 4.5 billion years ago. A dwarf planet is similar to that of a planet in that it has a mass substantial enough to take on a roughly spherical form, but not large enough to have a gravitational pull strong enough to dominate its neighborhood and drive out other celestial objects outside its satellites. McCulloch states, there's strong evidence that there's a newly discovered formation process for the Lonsdalite and regular diamond, which is like a supercritical chemical vapor deposition process that has taken place in these space rocks, probably in the dwarf planet shortly after a catastrophic collision. Here is the important part. The mysterious diamonds were formed after the collision, not during it like expected. This means that those kinds of unique, hard forces may not be required to create Lonsdalite, but rather the conditions that existed after it. Next up, where do these diamonds occur? The diamond, Lonsdalite, is found in various meteorites including Canyon Diablo Kenna and Allen Hill 77 7283, as minuscule crystals paired with diamonds, but these scientists didn't seem discouraged by that. According to a new statement from senior researcher Dougal McCulloch of RMIT, this study proves categorically that Lonsdalite exists in nature. Scientists are hoping for more research on this planet so that they can create it on Earth, but it will be extremely difficult. Lonsdalite, which appears as small crystals paired with a regular diamond in the Canyon Diablo meteorite, was initially discovered in 1967. It is transparent, brownish yellow, and has a refractive index of between 2.40 and 24.1. Hexagonal diamonds have also been created in the lab by compressing and heating graphite using explosives or a static press, in addition to meteorite deposits. Next up, how can we create laboratory-made Lonsdalite diamonds? After getting more knowledge about Lonsdalite diamonds, scientists are ready to head to the lab and create one themselves. The Institute for Shock Physics at Washington State University has created hexagonal diamonds that are large enough to investigate in the lab and test for stiffness and hardness. Not only is it the strongest, but it also has a stunning optical quality and very high heat conductivity. As a result, of shock compression research, we have now created the hexagonal form of diamond, which is substantially stiffer and stronger than conventional gem diamonds. Gupta's team used pressurized gas and gunpowder to hurl dime-sized graphite discs against a transparent material at a speed of 15,000 miles per hour. Shock waves from the collision course through the discs. We don't have to be concerned that the synthetic super diamonds will make our priceless jewels appear lifeless. Why? Because it was just long enough for the scientists to collect their data. The launch of light was only around for a few nanoseconds before the high-velocity impact destroyed the jewel. According to Gupta, the Lonsdalite's rarity and short lifespan may make them more valuable than cubic diamonds if they can preserve them for a longer period. Gupta, the scientist said, if someday we can produce them and polish them, I think they'd be more in demand than cubic diamonds. He added, if somebody said to you, look, I'm going to give you the choice of two diamonds. One is a lot rarer than the other. Which one would you pick? Next off, how do you fold diamonds? When Andy was researching Eurolite meteorites, the research team's work got started. Diamonds are unusually abundant in these meteorites. Under the microscope, Andy discovered stacked diamonds with various fold patterns. However, how can one fold the hardest of materials? He turned to Dr. Nick Wilson, Colin McRae, and Aaron Torpy, a group of our scientists. They were able to locate Lonsdalite grains among a collection of meteorites using their brand new quick imaging technique, spectral cathodoluminescence. The distinctive spectral signature of the grain allowed our experts to identify it. This was an essential action. It allowed scientists to find areas of the diamond as small as 100 microns. The team was able to confirm the folded diamonds were the rare Lonsdalite with the aid of RMIT experts. They were also the biggest Lonsdalite crystallites that experts had yet encountered. For many years, scientists have struggled to find samples this large. It has prompted some experts to deny the existence of diamonds made of Lonsdalite. Many cutting-edge tools were used in this study. These featured RMIT's High Resolution Transmission Electron Microscopy TEM, and our flagship electron probe microanalyzer EPMA. According to Dr. Nick Wilson, the team's use of cutting-edge technology and subject matter experience allowed them to confidently confirm the Lonsdalite. Nick stated, Individually, each of these techniques is important 
important, but when combined, that's really the gold standard. Next up, how could this discovery help humans? The study's principal author, geologist Andy Tompkins of Monash University, thinks the results could aid in artificially replicating the process on an industrial scale, where the incredibly resistant diamonds could subsequently be used to manufacture ultra-hard machine parts. Although not to the extent that Tompkins anticipates, Lonsolite has already been synthesized chemically. As we previously said, scientists could earn a lot of money if they could figure out the structure and composition of the diamond. It is truly life-changing, but we can hope it won't come with any drawbacks. Now that changes are being discovered on a broader scale, researchers may even market them. It will produce a different substitute for genuine diamonds that are extracted from the ground, extending their preservation. Lonsolite's extreme hardness may be used to create extremely robust tools for use in industrial settings. However, researchers also believe that this discovery can help us understand how the universe interacts and, ultimately, how Earth became a planet. Next off, how is Lonsdalite different from Earth diamonds? While Lonsdalite is a diamond as well, they are far from close. Although both Lonsdalite and diamonds contain carbon, Lonsdalite's atomic structure is hexagonal, whereas diamonds' atomic structure is cubic. What is the major difference, then? The stone is 58% stronger than standard diamonds, thanks to its hexagonal structure. Lonsdalite was discovered in a meteorite that, according to scientists, originated from a billion-year-old dwarf planet. When an asteroid struck that planet, the pressure was released, resulting in the formation of the stone. Diamonds are thought to have partially replaced lonsolite when the environment cooled and pressure dropped. This conclusion led scientists to think that hexagonal diamonds were more rigid than cubic diamonds. The mineral's hexagonal crystal shape, as opposed to the cubic crystal structure of terrestrial diamonds, sets it apart from regular diamonds. However, the hexagonal lattice is significantly less common in nature, making it very rare. Next up, how hard are lonsolite diamonds? The results of analyzing the sparse samples taken from meteorites or created in the lab are typically interpreted to show that lonsolite possesses a hexagonal unit cell that is related to the diamond unit cell, in the same manner that the hexagonal and cubic close-packed crystal systems are related. Six overlapping rings of carbon atoms in the chair conformation can be thought of as a diamond structure. In contrast, some of the rings in Lonsdalite have a boat shape. Cubic diamonds are represented by diamondoids at the nanoscale, whereas hexagonal diamonds are represented by the wurzoids. Where the bonds between the layers are in the eclipse conformation, which defines the axis of hexagonal symmetry, all the carbon-to-carbon -carbon bonds in diamond, both within a layer of rings and between them, are in the staggered conformation, making all four cubic diagonal directions equal. Since specimens under crystallographic inspection have not displayed a bulk hexagonal lattice structure, but rather a conventional cubic diamond predominantly composed of structural defects, including hexagonal sequences. These unique properties of the diamond have gotten many curious and raised some questions. According to a quantitative examination of the X-ray diffraction data of Lonsdalite, there are roughly equal numbers of hexagonal and cubic stacking sequences. The most accurate structural description of Lonsdalite has thus been proposed as a stacking disorder diamond. No matter how powerful earthy diamonds are, Lonsdalite will always be a step ahead. Diamonds are really a girl's best friend, with a ton of new diamonds ready to launch along with the hexagonal diamond. The market would be filled to the brim with exotic new and improved gems. When do you think we'll get to see the Lons Light Diamond again? What type of diamond is your favorite? Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching!